again, baby. And uh, we'll call you. Sure you will. Come on, come on, baby. I haven't got all day. Got a lead sheet, honey? Yes. Is this in the right key? Uh, could you play it a, a tone higher, please? Um, I sort of wrote this myself. Oh, swell. thing today and I, I've cried half the afternoon. Aside from that, I'm fine. Dad, would, would you mind if I used your shoulder for a minute? The boy's asleep? Couldn't wake him with a sledgehammer. At two in the morning, yes, but we can talk as loud as we want now. Kate, uh, how dumb was this dumb thing you think you did? Pretty dumb. I auditioned down at the Acerpsi. With the what? Oh, Acerpsi. It's espresso spelled backwards. Coffee house. Oh. Uh, you auditioned for what? Well, I, I thought maybe I could fill up some of my extra time. I figured maybe I could sing down there at night. Oh, what? Well, you actually think it's stupid to try to fill up your time? Well, isn't it? I mean, I'm a wife and a mother. Katie, uh, this Osirp, what is it? The Osirpsi. Well, what kind of a place is it? Oh, it's a nice place. No freaky people, if that's what you're thinking. Uh, it's, it's all academic anyway, Dad. I, I made a fool of myself at the audition. Katie, uh, there's no reason why you shouldn't get a job someplace. I mean, you, you look great and you sing very well. And with a household full of people to take care of the boys, you have no problems, right? You think that? Yeah. And you're not doing anything you're ashamed of, singing in a reputable cafe, are you? No. Tell me, uh, are they still auditioning down there? Well, why don't you go tomorrow and give it another try, huh? I will. Thanks, Dad. <laughs> Anytime, Pete. Hey, Dad. Hmm? You want to do something really wild? Uh, like what? Well, let's go downstairs, and you sit in your big chair, and I'll cook some of my famous oatmeal cookies and serve them to you hot. <laughs> Sounds great. <laughs> really wild. Does Kathleen Douglas live here? Uh, who wants to see her? Frankie Leslie. By the way, your phone's on the bum. I checked it out with the phone company, and they said it was being used. But since when does the phone company ever write? Right? Well, our, uh, our phone could have been busy. Well, in any event, I couldn't get through. Is Kathleen here? Yes, yeah, she is. Come in, Mr. Leslie. Thank you. Somebody's cooking something. Sure smells good. 
Uh, Barbara, this is Mr. Leslie. Uh, Barbara, my wife. Uh-huh. Well, hello. How do you do? Charlie O'Casey. Hello. Hi. Uh, Mr. Leslie's here to see Katie. I'll go tell her you're here. It is still hot, so uh, we... Katie, uh... Mr. Leslie, to see you then. Uh, hello. Hi. Why did you run out on me today? Oh, uh, you seem so busy. Oh. Everybody else around here is polite, but I ain't. Katie, who's this joker? I I'm sorry, I, I thought you'd met. This, this is Mr. Leslie. He owns the Usurpsy. Sounds like a disease. <laughs> uh, that's espresso spelled backwards, Charlie. It's a coffee house. Uh, Katie auditioned there today. For what? Charlie, as a singer. Uh, I hope you don't think I'm rude, but could I have one of those cookies? Oh, sure. Thank you. Uh, you know, I missed my whole dinner today auditioning dames. Uh, broads. Uh, <laughs> girls. You came closest, honey. I came the closest? Yeah, you seem to have something fresh about you. I hope you know more than just that one song. Hey, these are good. Oh, thank you. I, I have several songs that I could do. Good. You come on down to the place tomorrow about 4 o'clock and we'll run through the tunes with a piano player. And we'll talk money, too. Do you mind if I take some of those? I got an idea. Uh, take all you want. Thank you. Then it's a deal, honey? Honey. You know, Mr. Leslie, if you had made this offer a couple of hours ago, I would have said no. But since then, I've, I've talked with someone whose advice I respect very much. Okay, we've got a deal. What is it about Mr. Leslie you don't like? I didn't say I didn't like him. <laughs> no, but your face did. You know what Charlie has against him? He hates, and I quote, anybody who calls a girl he don't know, honey, right in front of her folks. <laughs> Unquote. Does that bother you? No, uh, nothing's bothering me, really. <laughs> oh, honey, come on. Say it. Well, as they say downtown, maybe I've opened a can of peas. I mean, Katie will be working late at night, and everybody that goes into that place can't be trusted. And then she'll be driving home by herself. Do you notice that you call him Leslie instead of Mr. Leslie? Well, so I call you Barbara instead of Mrs. Douglas. Well, that's different. Yeah, I suppose it is. Well, let's just say that some of us Solomons do occasionally have their moment of doubt. Tonight at 5, here on Odyssey. My sister-in-law, the one that cries, she just came home. <laughs> Bye. You better make that your sister-in-law the one that just got a job. <laughs> I start tonight. I can't believe it. Oh, Katie, that's wonderful. Sit down, tell me all about it. Here, honey, your dress is all done. Now take it upstairs and hang it up. Oh, can't I listen to Katie's junk? Later. All right, what did Mr. Leslie say? Well, first he's, he's leaving the way I dress up to me. Oh, and the, the pianist is just great. He transposes on sight. And, um... They're paying me scale to start, whatever that is. And he even wants me to make some oatmeal cookies. What? Well, he says he took that handful we gave him last night and put one on each saucer next to the coffee cappuccino, and the customers raved. <laughs> well, that's a, a triumph all the way around. Oh, Katie, I'm so proud of you. Oh, me too. I better go make those cookies. Oh, Barb, could you do me a favor? Yeah, sure. Um... Don't surprise me and come down there tonight. If I'm going to fall apart, I'd like to do it in front of strangers, not my family. Okay. Katie, we're all proud of you. Thanks. Hello. Steve! <laughs> I'm always surprised when you call in the afternoon. And delighted, too, may I add. Katie, she just got back. She got the job. Isn't that wonderful? Honey, you're saying all the right things, but you sound like you just lost your best friend. Oh, she'll be fine. Honest. Well, Mr. Leslie even wanted to make a batch of oatmeal cookies. Oh, honey, I didn't like you to be so suspicious. What ulterior motive could a man have about oatmeal cookies? 
good for you. You gonna be home for dinner? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Goodbye, love. Barbara, did you know that Katie's making cookies for the thief of Baghdad? Yes. Uh, well, he's paying her scale. Now, in the first place, that ain't gonna make her rich. And now, she's cooking for him. Calm down, Charlie. It just so happens that the cookies made a hit with the patrons, that's all. It certainly isn't an international incident. Who's going to pay for the flour? Me? I'm sure Mr. Leslie will pay Katie whatever it costs. Mm -hmm. Well, you know what I think about it? I'm afraid to ask. Yeah, well, I think the syndicate is in on it. Oh, Charlie! Did you see that guy's face? And the suit? And the slick down here. Charlie, he has to be a gangster. I mean, he didn't stand there and flip a coin, but did you see those beady eyes? I bet the syndicate is going to hijack the cookie. <laughs> Are you getting smart with me? <laughs> Sorry. I'm just trying to tell you that you can't dislike a man because of the way he dresses. I mean, give Mr. Leslie a chance before you condemn him. Okay. But if he gets out of... Katie. Well, I, uh, I was watching uh, the late show. And, uh... Dad, hmm? the TV set's off. Oh, well, uh, how was the job, Kate? <laughs> they liked me. I can't believe it, but they really liked me. And my oatmeal cookies were a smash. Well, that's, uh, that's fine. <laughs> it was all because of you. Oh, if you hadn't told me I was being so silly, I'd, I'd probably be upstairs crying right now. How are the boys? Oh, well, they're fine. Not a peep out of them. Oh, good. Well, excuse me. I, I, I've got to write Rob and tell him all about my job. Oh, uh, Katie, it's pretty late. Don't you think you ought to go to bed? Oh, I couldn't sleep now. I'm so excited. Anyway, I don't have to go to work till 9 o'clock tomorrow night. Dad, it, it's a whole new world. And, and uh, Frankie invited me to join them for breakfast after the show tomorrow. And, and, and he's, he liked my dresses, and he's going to get a brighter spot for, for my eyes. What? Oh. Thanks, Dad. Good night. Good night, Dad. Uh, if you two could see your faces, Katie is as happy as a lark. And the people who should be the most cheerful about it are the most miserable. Check your hand, Charlie. How many cards do you want? None. This is draw poker. You've got to draw. Who made up them rules? I did. Oh, all right. Okay. Let's talk about it. Katie has been working three nights now. Everything's been going just fine. The people love her. Um, she got an encore last night. The cookies were a smash. The boss is crazy about her. You uh, put your finger right on it. Oh, Charlie, why is it that you detest this man so much? And that goes for you, honey. I mean, why? It's not like you. Well, a pretty girl like that who's had the protection of a husband for so long, and now she's suddenly out on her own in a, well, in that kind of a situation. But that's the point. What situation? I'll tell you what situation. She had breakfast with the knothead at three in the morning. Oh, in a restaurant with Mr. Leslie and a musician and two or three other people? I mean, people who work late at night do that sort of thing. Yeah, well, I'm going to hit the sack before you convince me that Katie is playing patty cake in the sandbox with Santa Claus. <laughs> Good night, you guys. Good night, Charlie. Barbara, I guess I'm being unreasonable about this whole thing, but there's just something about Frankie Leslie that I... I have an idea. Why don't you go down there? Because you said it'd make her nervous. Well, that was three nights ago. I think she'd love to see you now. Me? You mean you won't go? No. I might influence your opinion. You go. In my head. And how many days... Oh, good evening. Uh, uh, you alone, mister? Yes, sir. We laughed uh, over there near the wall, okay? Right. All of the dreams and all... Uh, 
are you alone, sir? Yeah. How about that table over there in the corner? Hmm? Oh, it is. Uh, Charlie? Oh. Uh, I'll sit here. Thanks. Bye. Why didn't you tell me you were coming here? Why didn't you tell me we could have saved some gas? And it's been easy finding things that please me. Good, Charlie. Yes, she is. like that guy that played in Guns of Chicago back in the early talkies. No, I take that back. He looks like the guy that played in Scarface. Yeah, you're right, Charlie. Thanks very much. For what? Just thanks. Come on, let's go. Well, look, I didn't get any coffee. Yeah. Let's go anyway. All right. Well, you're leaving so soon? Yeah, we, uh, we'll bring the whole family back one of these nights. Real good. Hi, uh, Leona. Uh, this is some of Kathleen's family. This is my wife, Leona. Oh, nice to meet you. How do you do, Mr. Nice to meet you. Wife? Uh, we uh, owe you for some coffee. Forget it. It's on the house. <laughs> well, thanks very much. Did we pass the test? Uh, test? Listen, if I, I was in your place, I'd do the same thing. I'd test the water before I'd let my kid go swimming. Don't you worry about her. She'll be okay. I'm sure she will. Good night. Come back soon. Yeah, uh, don't tell uh, Katie we were here, will you? Oh, no. anything. What's little Charlie doing up so late? Well, he's coming down with a little cold and I thought some hot chocolate would just kind of soothe him. I'm going to take him upstairs. Oh, give him to me. I'll take him up. Come on, little fella. You you're, you're with your Uncle Charlie. Yes. Hi. <laughs> well? Well, uh, you were right, Margaret. I, mean, I had uh, Frankie Leslie pegged all wrong. He's okay. You see? Did you hear Katie sing? One number. And she sings very well. I thought maybe we could all go down one night when uh, it won't look like we're spying. I don't think she saw us tonight. Tell me. Uh, about Frankie Leslie. Yes. Well, in the first place, his wife is the cashier. He introduced us to her, and uh, she's very nice. They're, they're both very nice. You were right. I, I was just unfair in my judgment of him. I've got the best reason in the world for quitting, Mr. Leslie. I'm sorry about the notice, but well, you don't have to pay me for the three nights I worked. Yes, but what's this terrible thing that makes you want to quit on me? Well, one of my little boys has the sniffles. Sniffles? <laughs> yes. I'm sorry. I really am, Frankie. Thank you. Bye-bye. Well, Katie, uh, we can take care of little Robbie while you work. Oh, what kind of a mother would I be, Dad? Oh, I'm just sorry that you and Barbara and Uncle Charlie didn't get a chance to hear me sing. You know, I was pretty good. I'll, uh, I'll bet you were. I'm going to go right, Rob, and tell him the whole thing. Give him our love. Well, I guess that's the end of uh, Frankie and Leslie, hmm? Steve, 
Will you tell me why you disliked Mr. Leslie so very much? It's really stupid. Well, tell me. All right. I finally figured out that Frankie Leslie looked like every villain in every movie I saw when I was a kid. So, automatically, I disliked him. Now, that's pretty stupid. I don't think so. You don't? Well, no. To this day, I'm halfway in love with any man who looks like Don Amici. is all that much to you? Well, it was okay when we were still both in high school. So I was a senior B and she was a senior A. Now I'm a senior A and she's in college. You can see now there's a gigantic difference. Well, I've seen a lot of happy people when the woman's older. Bananas. <laughs> well, uh, back to my hassle with Jerry Sue. But she's the older woman. You know, maybe it isn't such a big deal that uh, she goes to college. No, I really don't think so, Ernie. Yeah, I'm gonna go after her. In fact, I think I'll go hang out at Chip's dormitory. You mean if Jerry Sue goes to Chip and Polly's school? Yeah. And hey, they might even have some of the same classes. Robbie, fix me! <laughs> Robbie. Come here, Robbie. Now, why would you bite your brother? Because I'm a snake! Charlie, bit me! I've got my snake! You're a snake! I thought you were a snake! Chip? Hmm? I wonder why I'm having such a rough time with geology. Probably because you don't care anything about it. I only had one other choice, that was astronomy. I had to choose rocks. So why didn't you pick stars instead of rocks? I don't know, that's what I keep asking myself. I've always liked stars, and I've never cared at all about rocks. What is this stuff? Stew. Stew sandwich? <laughs> we didn't have anything else except last night's dinner. You mean I'm eating a leftover stew sandwich? <laughs> is it really that bad? It's fine, honey. I'm sorry I brought it up. It's just a little hard to face the fact that you're the world's worst cook. Chip Douglas? It's Schindelbauer. What are you doing here? I just transferred from Long Beach State. How have you been, Chip? Fine. Are you still dancing with that ballet company? Yes, I am. We're going to tour Mexico this summer. How's your dad and Uncle Charlie and the rest of your family? Great. Oh, by the way, this is my wife, Polly. Polly, Nancy Schindelbauer. Hi. Hi. Well, I got to get to class, but now that I know you're around, I'll keep an eye out for you. Me too. See you around. Bye. Oh, nice meeting you, Molly. I'm mean, Polly. Yeah, nice meeting you, too. 
Well, she certainly is an attractive girl. Yeah, I knew her way back when we first came to California. You can tell that she's a dancer by the way she walks. Yeah. Chip, do you think I walk like a monkey? Of course you don't walk like a monkey. I will admit, your walk is a little unique. <laughs> Nothing like a monkey. Thanks. Polly, do I detect a bit of sensitivity today? No. Why should someone who's flunking rocks and makes soggy sandwiches and walks like a monkey be sensitive? <laughs> Hi, Chip. Hi. 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 Hi, Polly. Chip, there's a chemistry quiz coming up, and you're so good. Would you mind tutoring a couple of dummies? Why not? I've got to study for it anyway. Great. Uh, should we come by your dorm tonight? Well, sure. We'll make it about 7.30, okay? Sure. Oh, <laughs> thanks a lot, Chip. We'll see you tonight. Bye, Paul. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye. You know, I just noticed something. What? It's amazing how you don't know any ugly girls. A show coming up next here on Odyssey. Pickle girl mustache. Ernie, it's not what's on your face that's going to land you a girl. It's what's in your head. I don't think there's anything wrong with a mustache, Chip. Yeah, but nine hairs growing out of your lip doesn't exactly constitute a mustache. <laughs> you mean in a brotherly way you're trying to say I look stupid in a mustache? No, all I'm saying is I don't think you have enough hair follicles on your lip to grow more than fuzz. <laughs> Thanks a lot. That must be Donnell and Jennifer. Mm. Hi, you guys. Hi. Uh, come on in. I'll get my book. Hey, Donnell and Jennifer, this is my brother-in-law, Ernie Douglas. Bye-bye, Ernie. -bye. Hi. He's thinking about growing a mustache. Chip? Oh, we'll be downstairs in the study lounge if you need us. Okay? Okay. Bye. 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 Yeah. Nice meeting you. Work hard. Yeah. Wow. Wow what? You mean you let Chip hang around with two girls like that? Well, he's just helping him out. He wouldn't mind at all if the situation was reversed. Yeah, I guess. Ernie? I want you to answer a question, a clinical question, that has nothing to do with the fact that our family is all pretty close. Okay. Tell me if I walk funny. <laughs> not particularly. What do you mean, not particularly? Well, what do you mean by funny? Well, when I was little, my dad always said that I walk like a monkey. I used to think he was kidding, but now I'm not so sure. Oh, you walk okay. Oh, the worst thing I could say about your walk is that it's unique. <laughs> Ernie, you know, you'd make a great diplomat. <clears throat> Why don't you tell me about your girlfriend? Well, what do you want to know? Her name is Jerry Sue Hill. What's she look like? Oh, blonde hair, blue eyes. About your height, just like you, only built better. <laughs> oh, I, I don't mean built better. I, I mean, uh, built different. Oh, well, you know what I mean. She's sort of uh, more filled out than you. <laughs> Polly, I got my foot caught in my mouth, and I can't get it out. That's okay, Ernie. If someone's built better than I am, you don't have to be embarrassed saying so. Yeah, well, only I didn't mean exactly that. That's all right. I mean, I'm afraid we all have to get used to the fact that there are more attractive people in the world than we are. It's a fact of life. Well, it's also a fact of life that you don't have to put up with a dumb brother-in-law who can't think fast enough to say the right thing. <laughs> but you don't have to think fast to say the right things. You're a very honest person. You say what you think. So's Chip. Yeah, well, you don't walk like a monkey. And you're a real cool girl. And I like the way your hair just hangs there without you having to go to the beauty parlor all the time. Yeah, and you don't mess around with your eyes so you don't look all painted up like those two girls who were just here. The wow girls? <laughs> I, um, I think I'll go cruise around the campus and see if I can get to Jerry Sue or something. Okay. See you later. Right, uh, it was a cool dinner. So long. Bye. Of better intimate care. They are my favorite earrings. Well, Barbara, before we start crawling all over the room on our hands and knees, why don't we approach this thing intellectually? Oh. I mean, if we cover every move we've made since we came in here, we'll find them. You'll see. Oh. Now, we came into the room. 
And you said how much you liked the lobster Cantonese. I said I loved it. You said you loved it. And then I remember seeing you take off your earrings. Uh -huh. Well, what did I do with them? I haven't the slightest idea. Yet. Uh, come in. Hi, oh, you guys. Hi, Dodie. Hi, sweetheart. What have you got in the sack? A sandwich for Juliet. She's coming over for lunch tomorrow again. Tomorrow? Well, honey, you shouldn't make a sandwich that far ahead. It could go bad. That's okay. She'll eat anything she can chew. <laughs> By the way, Ernie says Chip's marriage is blinking. What does that mean? He said that Polly snuck out of the house and Chip didn't even notice it. And he's not paying any attention to her. And their whole marriage is wrapped up. Well, I gotta go. Did you hear that? About Chip and Polly? Yeah, according to Dodie, Ernie says that they're having trouble. Do you think that could mean anything? <laughs> Coming from Ernie through Dodie, I'd say no. <laughs> Particularly with Ernie being the biggest conclusion jumper in the whole world. Now, let's go over this again. We came into the room. You said how much you liked the lobster Cantonese. I said I loved it. You said you loved it. And I said so did I. Oh. That's the breakthrough. You didn't remember the so did I part before. That's right, I didn't. Then, then I remember you took off the earrings. And then everything's a blank, right? Right. No. No. You took off the earrings and you put them on the bed right there by your purse. Well, that's right. Why aren't the earrings there now? Because, knowing that if you left them on the bed, you would lose them. I very cleverly took them off the bed and put them here in my shirt pocket. <laughs> oh, you see geez. how the whole thing worked out? Oh. <laughs> now you get a free punch in the stomach. A free punch in the stomach? Yeah, that's what we used to say when we were kids. Oh. <laughs> you don't have to do it. There. Oh, honey. Hmm? Do you think there is anything to this uh, Chip and Polly thing? I mean, that they are having trouble? I mean... Ernie doesn't say things like that for just no reason. Well, this particular grapevine has too many flaws in it. I'd say forget the whole thing. I guess you're right. I mean, I really can't picture Polly sneaking out. <laughs> I can't either. But, Dad, she's never lied to me before. Well, Chip, are you sure she's lying? Well, I went to her class to give her some notes, and one of her girlfriends told me she hadn't been there all day. Polly told me she left early. What else is she? A couple times she's acted very suspicious on the phone. And then there's those things Ernie keeps noticing. Those things Ernie keeps noticing? Yeah. You know Ernie. Everything's psychiatric with him. Well, he says the general impression he gets is that Polly's acting like a woman with something to hide. And uh, you agree with Ernie? Well, at first I didn't. But now I don't know. Well, Chip, maybe I'm basically an optimist, but I'm sure there's a logical explanation to Polly's behavior. Yeah, and if I ever get a hold of that logical explanation, I don't know what I'll do to him. Hi, Charlie. Hi. Hi, Daddy. Hello, sweetheart. Too bad you're late, Steve. You missed a terrific meatloaf. There was some left over for you, only Tramp jumped up and ate it. Yeah, I'm sorry about that, Steve. But look at it this way. At least the dog is eating good. Well, that's some consolation. But I'll get something later. Uh, Charlie, is Ernie home? No, he's out waiting around the campus trying to bump into that girl, that uh, Ginny Sue or whatever her name is. When he comes home, will you send him up to my room? I'd like to have a talk with him. Sure. Did Dad look mad to you, Uncle Charlie? Well, something is wrong. I can tell by the way he bends his eyebrows. Yeah, well, all that Ernie's really going to get wiped out when he gets home. Yeah. I get to watch the Penny Puppet Show tonight, huh, Uncle Chuck? Mm -hmm. Well, only for about ten minutes. Tomorrow's a school day. Charlie, is it true the tramp ate the meatloaf? Yeah, he's just like Juliet Morrison. He'll eat anything. What kind of a crack is that? You should have insisted that Steve eat something. He's had a long day. What insist? When them eyebrows go up, the conversation is over. <laughs> Uncle Charlie, what is wrong with Dad? He hardly said hello when he came through here. We don't 
down, no, no. But me and Uncle Charlie think Ernie's gonna get shot down. Keep the sound low, honey. Hi, guys. Hi. Man, I'm beginning to wonder if Jerry Sue transferred to another school or something. No luck, huh? Nothing. Daddy wants you for something, Ernie. What for? Well, whatever it is, he ain't kidding. He's up in his room. What did Ernie do? Oh, he's got a big mouth, and he's been using it too much. <laughs> it's about Chip and Polly getting a wrecked wedding. Not a wrecked wedding, a wrecked marriage. Well, whatever it is, it's wrecked. Oh. Yeah, I I'm trying to save their marriage, not ruin it. Ernie, you know how I feel about gossip. But this wasn't gossip, Dad, honest. I, I saw their lifestyle, and the vibes were all weird. Vibes? Vibrations. But I tried to tell Uncle Charlie, but he wouldn't listen. So I decided to cool it for a while. You told Uncle Charlie in front of Dodie. Dodie told your mother, and your mother told me. Now, this is gossip of the worst kind, Ernie. All presumption and no facts. Dad, Chip coaches a bunch of girls. Ernie, I really don't want to hear about it. You know, what you've done is created suspicion in your brother's mind so that now he suspects his wife of who knows what. Don't you realize how serious this is? Well, sure, that's what I've been trying to tell everybody. Well, telling everybody is exactly what you had no business doing. Ernie, there are rights involved here. Private rights. They belong to Polly and Chip, not you. Do you understand what I'm saying? Well, yeah, but well, why should she sneak out? Well, personally, I doubt it. But even if she were sneaking out, Ernie, it's still none of your business. Not even scientifically? Especially not scientifically. Yeah, well, uh, before you close me out, Dad, let me at least tell you about some guy named Andre that she calls. <laughs> yeah, I, I wish I could figure out a reason why she's doing these things. I, I like her, too. going to charm school. Chip doesn't know about it yet. What do you think? I think you look striking. Well, I'll tell you what I think. I oh, uh, Jody, go tell your mom to come see Polly. Okay. I'm so nervous. I feel like I look like a nut. Yeah, well, I'm... Uh, oh, John. <laughs> Charm school. Yeah, she ought to get her money back. Charlie. Honey, why did you decide to make yourself over like this? Is it bad? I mean, down at the charm school, they said that I was the one that made the biggest change from the way she used to be. Well, they're certainly right about that. Uh, hello? Oh, Chip! Well, well, no, no, there, there's no need to be frightened. She's right here. Do you want me to put her... All, all right. Ah, uh -huh. uh -huh. Well, he's, uh, he's been worried, so he's coming right over. Dodie tells me, uh... Say, is this our Polly? Hey, Polly, do the walk for him. <laughs> Ain't that something? <laughs> it certainly is. Um, Polly's been going to charm school, and uh, this is what happened. Wow. Andre said that I was the quickest to learn. Andre? It's his school. I've been sort of sneaking over there so Chip wouldn't know. He can't say I walk like a monkey now, can he? No, he cannot. <laughs> oh. 
I wonder what's taking Chip so long to get here. Well, I do know one thing. We can't just all wait around here like a reception committee. Billy, come on, sweetheart. It's your bedtime. Man, Mama, I want to see Chip Crow when he sees Polly. Come on, I'll take you up here. I'll take you in later. Ernie, uh, maybe you'd better go on up, too. You must have some homework or something, huh? Yeah, I'll find something. As a matter of fact, Charlie, I think it'd be better if there weren't in the audience at all, don't you? I want to see him croak, too. <laughs> Come on, Charlie. Well, we'll be upstairs, Polly, if you want us. Dad, Barbara, please don't leave. Suddenly, I feel awfully stupid. Oh, well, Polly, uh, I got a flat on the way over. Man. We'll walk for him, Polly. She did it for you, Chip. She's been sort of uh, sneaking off to a charm school. Polly, you look fantastic. Dress and plow your hair. You like it? Yeah. But you can't go around just like that at the camp. Maybe when we go out to a dance once in a while. Oh, Chip. <laughs> if that's what you came in for. I just thought I could help. What's wrong? Look, I'm supposed to pick Dorothy up in 10 minutes, so she calls now and says she can't make it. Well, why can't she? Because her mother's got a headache. A migraine? No, for that she'd fly in a doctor from Vienna. Just a plain, ordinary little headache. Well, then why can't Dorothy make it? Because that battle axe mother of hers has to take pills every two hours. So somebody has to be there to remind her, right? Right. So what if I'm stuck with two tickets to a play for nine seventy-five a piece? What's that to her? Nine seventy-five. That's what they cost. And for all she knows, I bought and paid for two tickets in advance. But you didn't. No. But what difference does that make? It's the principle. <laughs> I covered all the news in my last letter. So I'll end now. All my love, Katie. Dear Robbie, I looked at three atlases in the library today, and I still can't figure out exactly where you are. Oh, Dorothy, come on in. Well, I have to get right back to Mother. I just dashed out to buy some headache pills. Is Charlie in? Oh, no, he went bowling. Oh, would you ask him to phone me? Uh, how late can he call? Till 9.30. That's Mother's bedtime. She sleeps very lightly. Dear, if I don't let them know this evening, they'll get somebody else to take over. And it might be on a permanent basis. To take over what? Mr. Gray's children. He just came down with the flu. If Charlie comes in too late to call, would you ask him? He'd have to be there tomorrow morning at 9. Take over what, Dorothy? At the music school where I teach. Didn't I say that? <laughs> no. I'm sorry. I'm a little upset. Do you think Charlie will do it as a favor to me? Oh, well, I'm sure he will. What is it? Well, Mr. Gray teaches cello, and if Charlie will just substitute until he gets over the flu... In a pig's eye. Well, do you want Mr. Gray to lose his job, Charlie? Well, who cares? I don't even know the guy. It's almost a charity thing, and besides, he has a wife and two children to support. And you get paid. Mm -hmm. Look, I got other things to do with. He's got kids, and I get paid? Well, it's a professional school. They probably pay their teachers fairly well. Can I tell Dorothy to be there? Well, I'll think it over. You're going to love working with children, Charlie. It's very rewarding. Dorothy? He'll be there. 
Well, not in so many words, but I know Charlie. Sunday drivers. Hi. Good morning, Charlie. Thank you for coming. Well, I'm only doing it for the money. Now, where's my room? In there. The children in your first class just arrived right on time. Mm. Can they play? Well, I haven't heard them yet, but they're the ones Mr. Gray picked for the recital. What recital? Saturday, a week from today. Why don't you and I go there together? Look, I don't go to any kid recitals. Uh, it's not in the deal. The faculty has to attend. Yeah, well, I'll think it over. You know, it sounds like somebody is killing cats in there. Oh, my best pupil. She's just warming up her fingers. She'd do better with gloves. Charlie, Mr. Gray doesn't believe in being straight. Look, you asked me to help, didn't you? Well, I'll handle it my... Do you guys always throw chalk and you brush your hair during a lesson? Sure, right up till the bell rings. Yeah, well, there's going to be some new rules around here, bell or no bell, starting right now. Well, let's just say he's a very uh, interesting teacher. call that a scale. Sure. I've heard better sounds in the lumber mill. Where are this from, Casey? How come we have to stay here all day? Well, for one thing, I happen to be bigger than you are. And another thing, Albert needs more practicing. Now start playing. You see that Charlie's still at school? Yes. I reduced myself to listening at the door, but I couldn't hear what he was saying to them. Well, Charlie barks a lot, but he, he seldom ever bites. You know that, and I know that, but somebody ought to warn those children. <laughs> I'm sure all that Charlie's doing is trying to get results, but I'll talk to him if you want me to. Would you? Would you just tell him to... What do the children say these days? Cool it. Yes, tell him to cool it. <laughs> Still not so good. Man, Miss Casey, I've never practiced so much in my life. I'm getting nightmares from it. Well, that's the only way you're going to learn. Now, nobody had to chain me to a cello to make me practice. You got to have the will to learn. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Tomorrow? We don't have lessons till Friday. You're going to get a lesson every day till the recital. <laughs> This is part five of the same letter. I'll mail part four when Barbara and I leave. We're going to a hen party, dinner and bridge. Uncle Charlie has been teaching for a week now. The recital is tomorrow. My Katie's time to leave. I just heard Steve's car drive. Already? Thank you. Be a good girl, sweetheart. Oh, hi. I'm sorry I'm late. You're all set to go, huh? Ernie's upstairs with the triplets and Charlie's bowling. Uh -huh. With Dorothy? You no, know, that's off. She doesn't approve of his teaching methods. I told Ernie he could leave as soon as you got here. He's going over to Harry's. You know, the one with the three sisters. Yeah. Now, there's a roast in the oven, and you and Dodie have a good time, okay? Fine. All right. Goodbye, folks. Goodbye. We Bye, won't be long. Goodbye, Goodbye, Dad. Dad. Bye. Have a good time. Goodbye, Thank Mama. You. Well, Dodie, it's Friday night, and uh, so you can stay up late and uh, do about anything you want. Can I stay up until 10 o'clock? Yeah, sure, you can stay up at 10 o'clock. And we'll just spend a nice, quiet evening together, huh? Okay, Daddy. Okay. Up at Show, tonight at 5, here on Odyssey. Daddy. Mm-hmm. Is this a quiet evening? Yeah, it's a pretty quiet evening, Daddy. 
You like it? Well, I thought there'd be more to it than this. Well, now who could that be? I'm Mrs. Cagle. Is Mr. O'Casey in? Oh, no, I'm sorry he's not here. When will he be back? No one ever knows when Uncle Charlie will be back. Uh, don't he? Uh, what is the uh, problem, Mrs. Cagle? I'm a reasonable woman, Mr. Uh, Douglas, I'm uh, Mr. O'Casey's nephew. Uh, won't you come in? Uh, As I say, I'm a reasonable woman, Mr. Douglas, but if that man doesn't let up on Albert, I'm going to stop being reasonable and sue somebody. Who's Albert, lady? Uh, Dodie, uh, why don't you run upstairs for a little while and play with Myrtle or something, huh? Get lost? Uh, well, something like that, yeah. Okay. But this is sure wrecking our quiet evening. Uh, Mrs. Cagle, I presume uh, Albert is your son and he's uh, one of Mr. O'Casey's pupils. Yes, and that stupid recital is tomorrow. Do you know what your uncle said to my Albert? Uh, no, uh, what did he say? These are his exact words. Albert, if you hit one clam at that recital tomorrow, you get the Chinese water torture. <laughs> Number one, I don't know what a clam is. Well, Mrs. Cagle, a, a clam is a, a, a mistake, a musical mistake. Whatever, anyway. Is that any way to talk to a ten-year-old boy? Chinese water torture. Uh, Mrs. Cagle, uh, Mr. O'Casey has a rather picturesque way of expressing himself once in a while. Uh, but surely you didn't take that water torture business seriously. Well, it's a threat, no matter whether you, you believe it or not. Well, he has Albert practicing hour after hour, day and night. And meanwhile, I've had to do all his chores. Well, it'll all be over pretty soon. Sure. And meanwhile, I've had a week of feeding that neurotic rabbit of Albert's. Oh, I know how this sounds, Mr. Douglas, but I have just about had it. You know what I think? Uh, no. Nothing personal, Mr. Douglas, but I think that man is a weirdo. Well, Mrs. Cagle, uh, would you say Albert is playing better? Well, what does that have to do with anything? Well, it seems to me the whole point of taking cello lessons is... Uh... The whole point of taking cello lessons is to get two credits in music. Now, he has Albert practicing hour after hour every day. Well, he probably feels that... Excuse me. Hello. No, Mr. O'Casey isn't here. Uh, Stanley's mother? Uh, Stanley who? Parmel. Oh, thank you. Uh, well, Mrs. Parmel... Uh... Oh. Well, of course, uh, Stanley didn't really think he meant it when he told him he was going to make him walk the plank. Oh, he did. Well, Mrs. Parmel, it'll all be over tomorrow night. Just tell Stanley that uh, Mr. O'Casey is the type that uh, growls a lot but doesn't mean what... Yes, I'll tell him you called. Uh, goodbye. Uh, Mrs. Cagle, about Mr. O'Casey, he's really not a... Excuse me. I'm Father O'Hara. I'm here about one of Mr. O'Casey's pupils, Wendy. Her mother asked me to come by. Oh, I see. Uh, well, come in, Father. Is uh, Mr. O'Casey in? No, I'm sorry he's not. Uh, Father, this is uh, Mrs. Cagle, Albert's mother. Uh, he's one of Mr. O'Casey's pupils, too. How do you do? Wendy's mother sent you, did she? Is it about that O'Casey monster? Oh, I wouldn't put it that way. Mr. O'Casey is rather strict. Did he threaten Wendy with the Chinese water torture? No, the Watusi Red Aunt torture. Of course, I realize he didn't mean those threats literally. No, 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 of course he didn't. I, I'm sorry about all this uh, trouble. I've said it before and I'll say it again. The man's a weirdo. <laughs> going to fire Charlie. Who? Oh, the faculty. They've had phone calls from all three families. Charlie wouldn't even let the kids off for lunch today. Oh, dear. Did your husband talk to him? Well, no, Steve had an early golf date. Are they really going to fire him? Yes, and I'm the one who brought him in, so I'm elected. Barbara, I just can't do it. Mm. Of course you can. Do you think your husband could do it? I mean, right after he plays golf? I just can't be the one to hurt Charlie like that. Well, Steve would be glad to. Uh, that's the wrong word. Well, he'll be there. Uh, not at all. Steve. Thanks, 
a lot. I, I just couldn't, you know. I know. Uh, where is he, Dorothy? He's in there. I'll be waiting in my room, and if you think he'd like to talk to me... Well, I wouldn't count on it, Dorothy. It's hard to know how we'll take this. Uh, I'd, uh, I'd wait till later. I suppose so. Thanks again. That'll make it. You mean you think it's good? Well, I, I've heard better. Let's do it again. All right. Uh, come in. Oh, Steve, come on in. I want you to hear something. Come on. All right, you guys. Take it from letter C. Uh, Charlie, uh, just a minute. Uh, could I talk to you alone? It's uh, sort of important. Uh, alone? Uh, come on, you guys. Uh, take five. Come in. Hurry it up. And I mean five. It's like somebody hit a sour note someplace. Charlie, there have been some complaints about your, uh, well, about your teaching methods here at school. So? Charlie, even if you don't mean it, you just can't threaten children with, uh, well, things like walking the plank or the Watusi red ant torture. Uh, well, anyway, the faculty, uh... The faculty what? Well, you know how protective mothers are, Charlie. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I know what you mean. <clears throat> you mean they've given me the air, right? But you have to understand why. Yeah. Look, it's all I wanted was for them three little mutts to be the best at the recital. I'm sure of that. That's all. in Uncle Charlie's room like that? Yeah? Well, it isn't. Okay. You want to know what he's doing? Well, no. Not really. Okay. Hello, Hello. Hello. No, Ernie, you cannot stay overnight. I told you that before. You come home. Okay. Yeah, midnight will be fine. Uh, tonight. Book. Your mother said don't forget your school books. Windbreaker. And your windbreaker. Thanks. And don't forget to thank Joe's parents for their hospitality. Okay, Ernie. Goodbye. You know, I, uh, I've almost forgotten what Ernie looks like. Oh? Well, he's a nice-looking boy. He's about this tall, and he wears glasses. Oh, yeah, I remember. <laughs> <laughs> Uncle Charlie is still staring. Oh. I thought if we left him alone, then... Well, that's exactly what we're going to do, leave him alone. Honey, don't you think maybe... No, I don't. Now, the recital's on right now. Actually, it's over by now, and uh, Charlie's just in there feeling sorry for himself. He feels left out, and I don't blame him. No, I don't blame him either. I think it's absolutely awful what they did to him. I agree. They called him a weirdo. <laughs> Honey, didn't I tell you to go to bed? Yeah. Only you didn't say right this minute. All right, go to bed right this minute. Okay. Come on, Myrtle. We have to go to bed. They call him a weirdo? Just one mother did, a Mrs. Cagle, and I think she was a little hysterical. And we let some hysterical mothers get Uncle Charlie fired. Steve, you didn't tell me this. I mean, you said some parents came by just to discuss the problem. Now, Uncle Charlie may be cantankerous, direct, and honest, but he is certainly not any weirdo. That makes me angry, Steve. That really does. Now, just a minute. Just one lady did it. But that is 33 and one-third of them. Dad, Uncle Charlie is sitting in there eating his heart out. I'll get it. You shouldn't blurt it out like that. We had a little ceremony sort of worked out, Mr. Douglas. 
Oh, wonderful. Uh, come in, Miss Cagle. Uh, Barbara, Katie, uh, Miss Cagle is my wife oh. and uh, her daughter-in-law, uh, Katie. Hello. Hello. Oh, and this is uh, Stanley and Wendy and oh. Albert. Oh, Hi. 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 I've been wrong in my time, Mr. Douglas, but I think I really overdid myself the other night. As the children told you, the cello trio won the recital best of school trophy. Not best of class, best of school. We wiped him out. Hey, where's Uncle Charlie? We have something to give him. Uh, Uncle Charlie? He said if we didn't call him Uncle Charlie, he'd kick us down the stairs or something. <laughs> you see how wrong I was. I called him a weirdo. So I heard. I'll go get him. I mistook the words he used for his intent. You never heard such sweet music as these children made tonight. We didn't hit one clamp. <laughs> what about the pizzicato passage in letter C? Uncle Charlie! Uncle Charlie! Uncle Charlie! We wiped them you out. You should have heard us. Man, we were cool. Hey, be quiet, you guys. I'm supposed to make a speech. Uh, anyways, on account of you, we won. And we want you to hang yourself in your room or something. We're going to have your name written on it later. Okay, Uncle Charlie? Okay. And all that happened last night. It looks like Charlie not only made musicians out of those three kids, but he saved the regular teacher's job for him. Charlie is taking Dorothy to an ice show tonight. I guess that's all for now, darling. Uncle Charlie is not taking Dorothy to the ice show.